All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Wolfgang, and this is about advanced field service management. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, as Rodrigo said, um, there's, there's a whole community behind it uh, that actually implemented field services in Odoo starting more than three years ago. And uh, by now we have quite uh, a footprint in OCA with field services, which is very exciting because uh, that whole area is near and dear to my heart. So let's jump in and uh, take a look at what's actually on the agenda. So first I uh, want to um, look at what is, um, uh, what's actually, uh, let me get this out of the way. So what's actually, uh, what is actually FSM? I want to give a demo and then talk about some example implementations, a roadmap, and then have some time for Q&A here. So the first question is what is FSM or field service management? And um, as part of that, there are a few questions like how do field services need to manage? So imagine you have fleets out there and they can do anything from, from sale, selling or salespeople out there. It could be delivery fleets, services fleets, repair, anything that requires people to be out uh, in, in, in the field and moving around and um, get their work organize the work orders. So this is um, the first question, what actually needs to be managed? And then the second question is, um, how can I improve the services that I already have and make it better, make it better for the customer, but also make it better for my bottom line and uh, use the technology available to really make an impact. So uh, to just have a few bullets on field service management, what's included here, there are some areas of demand and capacity planning. There's work order creation. And um, that of course means I have work orders that have a specific defined set of things that I need to do. I have vehicle inventory uh, that goes into parts and goods and equipment that I can take in the field. I know exactly what's on my vehicle. And if I deliver something to a customer, I take it off my truck to repair something, uh, get a set of batteries or fire extinguisher, whatever it is, I can take it and then uh, have full tracking of inventory from the picking to the customer and replenish the vehicle as well. Uh, I have work planning, that's assignment and scheduling. Uh, and that is um, sometimes even automatic assignment or scheduling or also optimization of schedules. So imagine you have a route of five stops and it can actually optimize the sequence of travel. And then we get into dispatching, which is the daily routine of doing the actual um, monitoring of workers. So I dispatch work out to them. I see where they are, I see their statuses. And at the end of the day, at one point they're completed and they have the completion time and costs and everything associated with this field service order and I can shove it over to the accounting folks so that they can do proper invoicing. And on, on top of all of this are uh, the tools and the need to do analysis reporting on, on the operations. And as we know in Odoo, I have all the data in one place and that's the power of having field service management in an in a ERP system. So with Odoo in an FSM, um, or the other way around, if it's MN Odoo, I have an enterprise version of, um, or in this case, uh, we actually have um, implemented FSM often in enterprise using Udo Enterprise because it is really for the little bit larger field services operations, not just a one or two vehicles. Um, so uh, what actually Udo uh, SA has done in the enterprise version, they included FSM based on tasks and priorities, but it's a little bit for smaller field services and simpler workflows, uh, but it's actually growing also. And um, there, there are lots of very nice things in uh, the FSM modules on the enterprise side. 
um, prior to Udu coming out with the FSM modules, we started with uh, the OCA initiative and Max actually was a big part of that as well as the, the technical architect on this and many, many others. So we, uh, based on the requirements that we have from, from, from the customer base that needs field services, we built out um, about 51 modules by now. And that's a, that's a big number. So we have 51 OCA field service modules that are available and you can see the link here. And they're available right now in version 12 and 13. Uh, and I give you a roadmap at the end of this to see where, where this is going. But there are also some extra modules that can extend the OCA modules because they are related to Udo Enterprise modules that uh, we cannot just publish in OCA, like anything related to help desk launching field services on the help desk. There, there are a number of those modules as well. And if you ever need access to those, just uh, contact us and we can, we can help you on this. Um, the next um, summary here is about one company that we're working with and they launched uh, this particular field service solution earlier in the year. It's Artisan Floors and they have um, as a service company, a focus on installing uh, flooring uh, in the US and they have about 12 uh, growing to, to more warehouses across the US and about several hundred installers. A lot of those are contractors and then they have several hundred work orders per day. So it's a pretty sizable operation. And with several hundred work orders per day, they also have several hundred invoices and several hundred sales orders. And, and so you see, you get the idea that it's actually a pretty large system where we have over the course of the year, thousands and thousands of, of items to deal with. So, we implemented this on version 12 and we have about 60 uh, OCA modules in that system. And of course, not all of them are FSM. Uh, I think we have about 20 or 25 uh, FSM modules here. And then we have some custom modules that we developed and you, you actually see when I start this that there is a, a small custom component uh, about the management of sales orders. So I'm going to um, hit escape here uh, get out of this and start with the actual um, demo. So if everything works well, you should see a screen here that is actually the, uh, the, the artisan system. So I'm starting with a sales order because that's really how in their world they start their field services. Uh, if, when I start with a sales order, in this case, uh, I'm picking this one here. Uh, it's, it's just a, a, a customer. You see, there's some fields that we added. Uh, in this case, they have uh, managed com uh, managing companies, property management companies that manage the customers. And we also have uh, locations. And then we'll get into that a little bit more. What is a service location? Because I can have an address that I go to, but within that address, I may have multiple apartments on multiple floors and buildings, even at, at an address. So I need to be able to go deeper than just a delivery address. And that's what we have done with service locations. So we pick a service location and then we typically pick a price list based on their, um, their pricing agreements. And again, this is um, apartment buildings that may have a property management company. So you're not dealing with individual people living in an apartment, you're living with a larger organization. And you can see um, some, some of the stuff that they need to install and do. So there's some, some carpet related uh, items and then there's some flooring with um, additional items. So usually this is, would be a smaller sales order. They may have 20 or more items on the list. And I wanna also point out that there's carpet installation over here and then there is other installation. These installation products are tied automatically in the background to launch a field service order. And what it means is when I actually accept this um, and uh, validate and confirm the sales order, 
um, you will notice a, a couple things happening here. So uh, I'm confirming the sales order and, and the nice thing, the way it would do works of course is that I have everything automated. I have my delivery orders, but I also have my FSM orders. So in order to proceed, I do need to do a delivery. So this is where the whole parts start. I have all my material in the warehouse. Now I'm actually going to pick it um, as part of the FSM process. I'm going to pick it and I'm just going to check availability for these items and I uh, validate. Uh, and yes, I do want to uh, accept everything here. And this is my first step. Now I have everything on the vehicle. When I have everything on the vehicle, that means that I can actually uh, start my FSM order. So I did this maybe out of chronological sequence because a dispatcher would probably go first over here to the field service order. And you may have seen me, I, I hit this, let, let's go one step back to the sales order. I have the sales order, I have a smart button for the FSM order up here. And that was automatically generated, I click it. And now you can see I have all the pertinent information on my field service order. I have um, fields and many tabs here that give me the idea to, uh, or give me the ability to schedule. I have a installation date that I can pick. I have a scheduled duration if I want to set this. I can also edit this and say, okay, my scheduled duration for this particular job, I estimate to be four hours. Uh, I have uh, maybe a time window in which I have to be at a customer site. That would be an earliest and latest request date. And then I have other things that I can fill in, uh, activities uh, that I need to do on site. Um, this is a fine grained list of things that I need to perform. I have um, change orders, stock moves, or stock requests, and then this Tania. is me do. Tania, le yeah. voy a llamar más tarde la chava. Tal vez la uh, sorry, llamar Rodrigo. En la tarde. Rodrigo, I think you need to mute. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, and then we have sales order lines, and the sales order lines are uh, coming from the sales order. This is good because they can see exactly uh, also in the field when they look at this what needs to be done, what needs to be installed. So they have everything right in front of them. There may be in additional instruction that flow from the sales order and customer. And then I get into uh, other uh, execution and accounting tabs that's all available here on the field service order. And there may be a resolution where I can enter what I did and how I solved a problem or case or install. And then on the accounting side later, uh, as this field service order progresses, I may be able to even do invoicing right from here, from the from the field service order. Um, so you see there are some stages, right? So every field service order goes through some stages. And I um, do wanna take a moment to just give you the general overview. Uh, where, where do field service orders fit in here? So in this case, uh, if I go back to my, my order um, menu here, uh, you'll see I have uh, orders, oh, sorry, I'm on sales. So I need to actually go over to the field service order. Um, and I don't want to do that right now. So I, I'm fine. So let's go to field services, switch over. And here's the Kanban view for future orders that I have. Uh, if I take this filter out, uh, there is actually, uh, there is a whole, a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> A whole lot of activity here, as you can imagine, as I mentioned, how many service orders these guys process. So I'm, I'm going to put my filter back in um, just to make it nice and easy to manage. So let's take one of those service orders. I could have continued with the one that I created earlier, but it doesn't really matter. I, I click this one and I can assign it now out to a person. Um, and that, that allows me then to actually put it in a state of assign. So if I start with a new service order, um, let's run this one through. Um, I would usually go in first, edit, uh, set a assign to person, then uh, assign a vehicle. Remember we have stock on vehicles, so we wanna make sure we have the right vehicle because stock moves to that vehicle. And uh, then we can add additional things, maybe make changes to the schedule. And if I'm done here, uh, I can save and then assign this out and that this will move it up in the sequence to the next stage. 
And then the idea is that uh, I may even communicate via a mobile device with the field service person and they can then set it in progress. Uh, once I uh, am actually working on it, I can track time, the time sheets, uh, other things, and they flow back to the field service order here. Then when I'm done, I can set this into review. Uh, now I'm reviewing what the people have done in the field. Uh, and, and I should have mentioned these stages are all configurable and they're not only are they configurable, they also have different colors associated with them as uh, a stage set up. And, and uh, that helps to see when you look at a map, for instance, which color code, which stage they're in by just looking at the different colors. Um, so we have, uh, we have a, still one step to do, which is approve this. I reviewed this. I like it. I approve it. And now once I approve this, it's actually ready to get into the um, uh, invoicing part. So I can generate an invoice in the vendor bill because it's a contractor, a 1099 in the United States. I can uh, do this um, on both, both ends generate a vendable and an invoice out of this field service order, and then move on. Um, from a dispatching point of view, you may hear often when, when you're in field services that you have skills and other things to consider. So I want to just give you a quick view of what all the underlying functions are. We already looked at orders. In operations, I also have the ability to do recurring orders, and I can set frequencies like monthly. So in order that I need to do an inspection on a monthly basis would automatically generate all my orders for the month. And maybe I only need three orders in advance. So it will schedule for three months in advance. Um, and then I have the stock request that you guys are all familiar with. For master data, we're looking at customers and then this, this new thing that we call locations. And locations are a hierarchy of parent and child locations that can go down from a address building floor level to a room, to a rack in a room and a little tiny uh, box for a screw if you want to. So it's, it's, it's very fine grained and you, you can define how you want to organize these. We have workers. The workers are actually uh, tied to, to the partners, partner records, but there's additional items on there like worker skills and the location of a worker, as I'm, I go through, through the day, I actually can update through tracking the location of the worker and see that on the map. And then we have templates and products, of course, that we, we tie into field services. From a reporting point of view, there's orders, inventory, locations, and uh, the worker skills. How do I match my skills? I need a licensed technician for this job so we can actually make sure that we don't assign work to somebody that's not assign assignable because I don't have the right skill. And here are all the setups. I mentioned the stages and there are uh, a number of different uh, stages. So in this case, we're just looking at orders and uh, just to give you an idea uh, what, what the stages look like. So we, we have, we can make it uh, the, the, the standard stages, but then we have added a color code and when I click on, for instance, a map here, which is a, a, a map that shows where the locations are, you notice that this is in green over here. And some other orders, if I zoom in a little bit, they may actually have different, different color codes, right? So I may have uh, this, this, this uh, orange, yellowish color. And there's actually, as you notice, there were four uh, there was a number four on this. So I have four of these field service order, orders at this location. And from here, I can drill in. Uh, there's different mapping options that we implemented. This is the Google mapping option. Um, and we also have the geo engine mapping option. So that's all open source. The reason we went with two options is because people uh, are used to Google Maps. And once we get into routing and route optimization, you need routing tools and Google APIs allow us to do uh, routing because they have um, good geocoding. And there's more on the open source side in the future that we're also going to implement here. So um, that is a very, very 
quick view on what field services uh, looks like in, in a demo environment. Let me go back to my slides and then I continue. Um, there's, there's a lot more. I've, I wanted to point out one more thing um, before I go back to my slide decks. And that is uh, if I go over here to orders, uh, I have a function that is an OCA um, element for, um, for GAN charting for, for timeline. And you can see there's all these different um, orders here that are uh, on the GAN chart with the timeline. They can go to, uh, let's say, uh, today. Today is, uh, well, let's, let's say I'm doing this advance for uh, November 2nd. And I, I see my field service orders. And over on the left, I see all the workers. So I can actually drag this over here and assign this out to these people. And if I think the time slot is not correct, then I can highlight this and move it over. And um, based on this, the, the status will not necessarily change automatically, but we have set uh, some, some server side actions that when we change certain things like assignments, we can automatically forward the state, uh, the status in the Kanban view if we want that. Uh, you can also, of course, click on this and then open up uh, what's behind this, and this is uh, the full integration. So it's a little bit different than the um, standard uh, GANs and, and standard timeline view uh, because we also allow filtering across both dimensions, orders, and people. So if I have people that have a skill like electrician, I can filter on that and see only my electricians and see only my uh, electrician orders. So that's a specialty here. But let's go back to the um, presentation and um, make sure that we leave some time for questions and answers here. Um, I wanted to jump into um, some other implementations. Let me go back to my presentation mode here. All right, so we have a number of customers and different areas that are interested in fields, interesting to field services. Uh, uh, we have internet equipment and service providers, fiber optic installers, so construction type things. Um, we have customers that do inspections, or actually I shouldn't say customers, the community overall uses FSM modules for, for all of these. There's new, new construction for, let's say, entertainment system wiring, pre-wiring of um, all sorts of uh, cables in a house. Uh, that's that's a uh, one organization that's doing this uh, in Houston, uh, sorry, in, in the Dallas, Texas area. We have uh, flooring. You just saw an example there. Lawn services. Actually, one of the big contributors is uh, Brian McMaster, and uh, he is not only a talented developer but also uh, he's running a lawn service company. And so we have some good examples there. And I encourage you to reach out to him. He's um, uh, really a, a great resource for OCA. And then uh, rental equipment. This is what, something we're going to build out some more because there's some complexity in rentals, but some of that can be done already. And the roadmap that we have in front of us is that we right now uh, have route sequencing and optimization, something that Brian actually put together. And then uh, we have a mobile FSM app that's also available at request, but we're going to do more with worker tracking auto arrival and auto statuses based on GPS. Uh, and that's in beta and coming out real soon. And then we have the map-based dispatch of uh, orders and workers. That is where I can actually see both orders and workers on the same map and dispatch it out because I have the relationship, the geographic relationship. And then we have the uh, portal uh, access where we have field service orders on the website. And that's coming also this year. Uh, what I say as detailed functional documentation is a gap for people that are new to FSM. They want to see how, how do I use all these 50 something modules and they need something more than what's on GitHub to find their way through, particularly when they're just on the business side. Um, so we're going to help them with some more documentation. And then we have the migration. All major modules are actually uh, migrated in November. Uh, where we have a whole community uh, that's completing that. There are, there are already some core modules uh, that are migrated. And then we're doing the same for version 14 very soon. Uh, 
And uh, the interesting part also is mobile disconnected operations. When you're in the field, you have your field service orders, you run out of cell phone or mobile connection, but you can continue to work because all your updates on the mobile phone are stored and you can then sync it back to Udo. There's a special app for that that you can download, um, but there's, um, yeah, it's not, not, not all uh, freely available. The, the, some of the mobile development, I think, uh, has, a, has an app cost to it as well, but it connects nicely into the whole family. That brings me to questions and answers. Okay, thank you Wolfgang uh, for this presentation. It's really good stuff. I think one of the questions was from from Daniel, but you already, uh, let me see. Uh, where's the chat? Okay, so one of the, the first question, I believe it's, it's already done. It was related to the maps. Do we have maps visualization for orders and for vehicles, uh, I guess you already uh, answered that, but I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, um, it's it's actually something that I believe uh, would be very nice to see in, in core Udu or maybe uh, a stronger community involvement if, if, if uh, Udo SA doesn't deliver that component. And that is the ability not to do one model only on the map, but the ability to mash multiple uh, objects from different models. Like I want to see customers, but I also want to see my, my, the location of all my equipment. Um, and I want to see the workers, how they're moving around with GPS coordinates. But I may mm -hmm. also in the future have other things like territories that I want to display. Imagine you're doing territory management uh, and you have tight territories and people should only work in their specific areas. So we want to bring all of this together, but um, uh, we're, we have to do our own um, work right now uh, as, uh, within OCA to to enable that, but I think this would be great for the entire customer base, not just in OCA. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Wolfgang. There's another question from Ricky here. Uh, he's asking if uh, if there's anything on SMS notifications. Yes, um, SMS notifications are important for dispatching. People use uh, text messages all the time. Um, so there's different ways to implement it. Uh, there are some messaging services, of course, baked into Udo, but we also have uh, messaging services that can be third party integrated. Um, that, that's a little bit extra effort and cost. SMS message services uh, are not free uh, unless you build something on your own with a particular um, provider in the United States. I can. I can send text messages to my Verizon um, uh, through, through the Verizon portal to an email, essentially. And um, that allows me to send text messages at no cost. For a if I know that the, the recipient has a Verizon phone, I can do that. Uh, but that's very limited. OK, great. Uh... Guys, if you have any additional questions, there's still like five minutes to close it up. If, um, let me see, you can put your questions in the chat and I can hand over those questions to Wolfgang. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, like I said, it's uh, it's quite a, a route that we went on for several years now. And where we are is pretty amazing from no field services in Udu to now having the ability to satisfy very specific elements because we have these 50 something modules that we can deploy. And yes. then um, the, the real exciting part for me is to combine that with the route optimization uh, to eventually also do automatic assignment and scheduling. Now, when, when you're automatically 
assign and then schedule things out. You sequence multiple f field service orders on routes and you assign it to the right route. Uh, there's always some manual manipulation. Uh, so the key thing is to make, make it really seamless in Udo to allow drag and drop operations um, like we started on the timeline view uh, and make that really a easy to manipulate tool set that I can adjust my automatic generated assignments because no algorithm can always consider some of the, the, the fine points that humans know and uh, will have to adjust manually. Okay, we, we still have uh, one, uh, well, actually two questions coming from Vincent. He's asking the first question, uh, if it's uh, still available for B11. And the second question will be, uh, if the model for GAN view is part of the field service model. Okay, so the first question, is it available in version 11? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, in version 11, we used a similar strategy that we do using now, which is projects and tasks. So everything in um, version 11 that we did was just based on ex expanding on the project and task model. And then we mm -hmm. saw the limitations yeah. and we yeah. moved in 12 to, to our own data model. Uh, so no, it, it would take significant effort to backport that. And the second question um, was, what? can you repeat that please? Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, is the model for Gantt view, is, is it part of the field service model? The model for what? Gantt, Gantt view. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's part of the OCA mod, mod, models. Um, so yes, we have that timeline view for field services and that can be downloaded as anything else. So yes, it is available. Uh, Wolfgang? Yes. The uh, field service module is available on version 11. That's when we started and we did the migration to version 12. What's, what we did based on project and task, it's on version 10. Oh, so, you're right. I'm already a version ahead of me. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take all of this back. So yes. Thank you, Max. <laughs> hey, okay. We won't, get, we won't get those 50 modules, but the, uh, we, started, we started the projects on version 11. And I think you may find still find like 10 or 12 modules there. And then we switched, we migrated and continue the development of all those 50 modules on version 12. It's so great to have Max here. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, I think we are done with the Q question and answers. Thank you everybody for attending the meeting. And of course, uh, thank you Wolfgang for sharing this, this magnificent session with us.